Hello everyone, uh, this is Al Fadi, and we like to welcome you back, myself and Dr. Jay Smith, who is with me here in studio, to continue our discussions uh, through this video series that we called the Qibla controversy, King versus Gibson. And so far, we have laid out enough foundation material to get to this point where we are going now to begin to unpack some of the presuppositions that Dr. David King used to argue against the findings of Dan Gibson. Dr. J, again, why are we calling it controversy and what are these presuppositions that you are going to address today? Well, it's a controversy for King. It's not really a controversy for Gibson. King has written this 52-page diatribe against uh, Gibson and really confronts him. It does an awful lot of personal attacks on this, which is just uncalled for. And actually, al almost made me put it down. I almost said, I got fed up and I said, this is nothing more than an emotional response. There's nothing really concrete in here. Uh, let me give you an example. Remember when we stopped in the last, in the last episode, we talked about the parallel mosques. And we refer to the fact, let me just show you the image of the parallel mosques. Let's put the, the image back up there. And you can see these parallel mosques that you see there, uh, they're in North Africa and they're also uh, in Spain. Cordoba was in Spain. So Andalusia, as it was called back then uh, in the 600s and 700s. So that's where those mosques are facing. You can see they're not facing Mecca. They're not facing Petra, which were the three earlier Qiblas. Petra was the earliest. Then there was the in-between Qibla. And then there was a Meccan Qibla. And then you have these Qiblas that start to appear uh, in the second, uh, the uh, first half of the uh, of the 700s. So here are these facing straight south uh, in re roughly parallel lines, parallel to a line that goes between Petra and Mecca. And they're all parallel with each other. I mean, that's the they're interesting They're all parallel part. with each other. And they're all and they're parallel between Petra and Mecca. So there's a reason for this. Uh, K King's reason is that, in fact, what King does, he looks at these parallel mosques and he takes each one of them, having not been there himself, he just looks at different, he says, well, one of them is because of the sun, another one is because of the stars, another one is following uh, the equinox, another one is following the building walls, he even refers to the solstice lines, he loves the solstice lines. These are the the, the two lines of where the sun sets in, no. uh, on the Early, uh, this longest day and the shortest day of the year. So let me raise uh, this objection uh, or, or at least a pushback as uh, someone who is a former Muslim. Are you telling me that people who lived in those areas in North Africa never once went to Mecca to do the pilgrimage? They knew the direction to get to Mecca for the pilgrimage, but they didn't know the direction to pray towards Mecca? <laughs> That's a good point, yeah, I see what you mean. That's a great point. They, how did they get to Mecca if they didn't know where Mecca was, if they did do the pilgrimage, uh, if Mecca didn't even exist at this time? We don't, right. Mecca didn't even exist. So certainly, assuming Dan, uh, uh, David King's premise is clear, What's more, even one of his, another one of his excuses is that they follow one, uh, two of the walls of the Qibla that's in Mecca. Though that, the, that Qibla that's in Mecca today is only there today. So he can only do that by measuring the walls that are there today, that two of these are, 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 are uh, follow the same, same di uh, direction of these walls in the Kaaba in Mecca. I'm rather really surprised to hear that someone of his caliber can use later data to support earlier, basically, uh, matters or issues, or in this case, uh, controversies. What's wrong with that premise right there? If they could go to Mecca and measure where the walls are going, then why can't they face their why can't they face their mosque towards those That's same, exactly right. Same, that same place. I mean, you're already saying that they're pretty astute that they can see the direction of the walls in Mecca, and they then parallel those same walls in Mecca. Uh, they need to. They know that much. Then why did they actually point it towards Mecca? If they already knew, if they've already been there, knew where it was, and also knew the direction of these walls. And also, when you see the parallelism uh, that that they're uh, taking place, I mean, it's almost perfect. You know, I mean, it's somebody who used actual measures to try to come up with something like this. It's not a coincidence. Okay, which brings up another point, and this is a good one that you're bringing up, and that is if you already have, if, if you're coming up with a, a different theory for each one of these mosques, why don't you just stand back and look at their Qiblas and see that they're all facing the same direction? Doesn't that suggest that, exactly. that they have one theory and one theory alone, and they're all in the same area to begin with, and it's only those mosques in North Africa and the and Spain in that same geographical area that are facing the same direction? 
rather than try to make up a theory for each one, as we're going to see later, he That's even exactly super right. la he superimposes it on building existing buildings or Roman structures or Roman street lines. For one, like the Cordoba Mosque, he looks at the streets of Cordoba and say, ah, these follow the Roman lines that were there beforehand. Rather than have a theory for each one of the kiblas, why don't you just pull back and look at them all as a group and see they're all facing the same direction. And that's the thing when, remember, we looked at those four categories of kiblas, each one of them you can defend and provide a background as to why versus saying, oh, they were all in different directions. No, they weren't. There is specific groups and there is a reason, sometimes it's political reason that was behind it. It reminds me of that great that great um, uh, kid story, or it was actually a kid story. It's a, it's a great parable that I heard as a kid uh, about the 10 blind men who are shown an elephant and they have to feel it. And they each describe what the elephant is depending on what they're feeling. And they come up with 10 different viewpoints of what this elephant was. And if you only were to stand back and look at the elephant, pull back away, you can see what the elephant is. And that's the same thing that's going on here. It looks like King and those in the eight, nine, and the ten hundreds of Muslim scholars are doing the same thing. They are not looking because, but I can understand why uh, those in eight hundred, nine hundred, ten hundred don't know what to do because they don't have the imagery. They don't have uh, that's right. The Google Maps. Yeah. They don't have any. Right. They don't have a mapping satellites like we can use today. They can't pull back. There's nothing up there that can pull back. But King doesn't have that excuse. King can look at what the, where these are looking, and that's why Gibson is so important. What Gibson is doing is what every researcher should do. If you don't understand what's going on, rather than just come up with all different theories for every mosque, why don't you pull back a little bit, look at from a distance, and sit, take a look and see where they're facing? Because they are all facing the same direction, these parallel mosques. That's right. That's right. I mean, and that must mean that there is a reason that goes beyond the fact that they didn't know their direction. They did. They've been to, as you said, they've been to Mecca many times. They knew where it was. And like you said, they're if all in the they, same. Mecca even exists. Wherever they did their pilgrimage to, they've been there many times. That's right. And they were in the same region. I mean, that in itself is peculiar. One of the th uh, one of the recurring th phrases that comes up over and over again in this petra fallacy of, of Dr. King's is these people, these earlier people, could not see Mecca. It was over the hill. How could they know where to face? Unless they had mathematical equations, like we they did in the eighth and the ninth, uh, the ninth, tenth, and eleventh century. In those centuries, they had mathematical equations. Therefore, they could finally get the Qibla correct. They couldn't have seen over the mountains. My goodness, how can they see the exact location of Petra <laughs> and al Wasit, but they cannot see the exact location of Mecca, the holy city of Islam? Okay. Take it one step further. Who were these people that supposedly were barbarians? Who were these people that were supposedly witless and so innocent that they couldn't have known directions? Who were they? They're not from Mecca. We know that. They're from Petra. Who and what? Or who lived in Petra? What were these people that lived in Petra? Do you remember this? Do you know yeah, the, the Nabataeans, of course. Oh, the Nabataeans. But beside, uh, before uh, you get into that, which is a great point, I want to point out, when you start talking North Africa and also Andalusia, we're talking people who were Greek, who were scientists, who had a lot of experience. We're not talking just any group of people. Well, I want to go beyond the Romans, and I want to marry the groups, and I want to come to the Nabataeans, because what, right. what do we know about the Nabataeans that's unique about them? Well, I mean, uh, they definitely have a place of worship. Uh, it appears that they have a temple. Uh, it appears that they have invented the Arabic uh, as we know it today. Or We're going to get to that. You know, right. Right. But what else do we know about them? What were they known for? What, why, why was it that they never had a kingdom? You notice they never had a kingdom. They never had a political kingdom. From the second century BC all the way up until when Islam began, and we know that the Islam came out of the Nabataeans, but up until that time, they were traders. Right. And why were they so good at trade? Because they were the only ones that could cross the deserts. And they knew the routes, you know, they were the, the There were no routes. I mean, they knew how to find it in the desert. How did they find it? That's an excellent point. I mean, uh, astrology, you know. See, the Greeks couldn't the, find it. That's right. The Romans couldn't find it. 
Nobody else could get across that desert, that huge, great desert that's still there today. The great desert, the Sahara Desert, no one could get across except the Nabataeans. That's why the Nabataeans are so well known. If you look at the history, and that's why you need to look at Dan Gibson's story of the Nabataeans, but don't just read Dan Gibson. Everybody that knows about the Nabataeans knows this one thing. They were the state's craftsmen. They were the ones that could get across the desert where no one else could. They were the ones that knew where all the oases were. They were the ones that had to survive to get to those oases. Because remember, you could from Saudi Arabia, you know there are great storms there, there are great winds, and the sand dunes change, the wind changes them, and if you don't know your direction, you won't get to the oasis, and if you don't get to the oasis, you die. Exactly, and they knew the wells, the location of wells, the survival, and you know, all kind of things, and uh, I mean, they, they have their architecture is amazing, you know, uh, in and of itself. So these people actually knew their their direction pretty well. Why didn't King know this? And also, I mean, I, as someone who's an engineer myself, the architecture of the Napataeans that b was built inside of mountains, basically, they engraved those buildings, require a great knowledge of math to be able to do this. Are you telling me they didn't know the direction of Mecca? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't need to know the direction of Mecca. You'll see why. But let's go. So you can see the parallel mosques are actually very specific. The parallel mosques actually are very clever. The parallel mosques actually are saying something that's political. We're going to get to that political statement later. What I want to do is continue with their methodologies before we go on. Now, the methodology, as we said earlier, uh, for King was let's go to the 9th, 10th, and 11th century scholars and let's just basically mimic what they say uh, because they are closer to the event. But if you look and see what they say, they're as confused as anybody. They are therefore saying, in fact, they're very proud. The fact that we now have mathematics, we know what we're saying. We have mathematics, we therefore are, are the ones that get it. And the early ones were barbaric. They didn't have any idea. That's why everything's uta puta. And if they're, you're going to use that as your criteria, you're going to have to prove that. And that's all that King has done. King never went to these places. He never bothered to look. And he never bothered to look at where these masses of, uh, of mosques were facing. Gibson was the first to do this. Gibson said, I'm not, I don't like this. This doesn't make sense. All I'm looking at is what people thought was going on, but they're hundreds and two hundreds and three hundred years later. I want to go back to where those people are, and I want to go to those places, and I want to see where they're directed. Now, before Gibson did this, King didn't know about these, these Qiblas. Did you know that? That's the thing. That's the thing that is interesting. He only went to one Qibla himself, and that was in Samarkand. He didn't go to Canton. He didn't go to Sherman. He didn't go to any of these in, in Yemen. He did go to the Cordoba. I'm sorry, he did go to the code though, but he knew about, he had studied them from the from what the 9th, 10th, and 11th people had said about them, but they were only talking about five or six Qiblas. Uh, you're telling me this is the world-renowned expert on Qibla? And he didn't know about these other mosques. Gibson is the first one to actually expose these, to expose just how wholesale they were different, expose that there was not just five or six mosques that were off, there was over a hundred mosques that were off. Ooh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Now, I, I, you're right, I'm incredulous too. If this is, if King is the world authority on this, why didn't he know this? Because he didn't go to any of these mosques. Mm -hmm. He didn't bother to actually get to them. And that's the presuppositional base. This is the methodology. And this is why we need to be careful. Those of us who are researchers, you're a researcher, I'm a researcher. Those of us who are coming up with all kinds of, of problems, difficulties, historical problems, all kinds of architectural problems, engineering problems, we've got to rather than just come up and s sit in the, our offices like we could do and look at the computer and go up online, we need to actually go to those places. We actually need to go. And that's why I say, Gibson is like Indiana Jones. He actually went to those places. He physically got there. He actually went and spent time amongst those people. He actually talked to them in their own languages. And then rather than sit there and come up with his theories based on much later people's principles that are nothing more than theories, he didn't say that they must be gospel truth. He says, no, there's a problem with those theories. I don't accept those theories. And that's why he didn't read any of King's books. He had, I'm sorry, he did read King's books, but he didn't agree with King's books because King, he saw that King was using theories that were much too late. 
These are much too late. These are 100 to, uh, 200 to 300 to 400 years too late. You've got to go to the mosques that are on the ground. Right. And that's why he found out that they weren't in all directions. They were actually only in four directions. And there are reasons. Look at the sequence of those directions. They follow a sequence and they follow a reason for everyone. When you look at the history of what was happening between the Umayyads in the north and what was happening about with the Abbasids in the east, these two great wars, they hated each other. They were the Persians. These were the Arabs up here. And interestingly, the Arabs are way up in the north. What are the Arabs doing way up in Damascus? They should be down in the Hejaz, like everybody's been telling us. There's nothing in the Hijaz. We're going to get to that later as we're going to look at where the Arabic language comes from. We're going to hold off on that because I don't want to get that into this because we're still dealing with the Qibla. And that's a whole other thing that we need to unpack, but we'll do that. So here you have this difficulty with these two different presuppositions. As we go to these assumptions, what I want to do is I want to then start the next episode by asking the question that King came up and look at his assumption. His first assumption is that they're all over the place. Their reason why is because they didn't know how to get their direction. They couldn't have found their direction because they were too barbaric. They were just right. too dumb. Gibson says they are not dumb. Actually, these people are the most astute. King's reply is nope because their Qiblas are by far the worst Qiblas. The Qibla of Mecca is the most accurate. Let's see if that's correct in the next episode. Yes, and that's really a, a, a good way to end this particular one. Next time we will begin to look at uh, these kind of arguments that Dr. David King have raised. Thank you again, uh, Dr. J. Smith, for your contributions. And we thank, of course, our dear brother Dan Gibson for his hard work and his research, and we're thankful that Dr. King took the time to really, uh, uh, you know, do a rebuttal because that's helping us now begin to examine both sides and allow our audience and listeners to judge according to the data. But our appeal is really to our Muslim friends. We're hoping that they're paying attention to what's going on here. Don't judge things emotionally as it appears, sadly, that that's that's my own feelings. Uh, Dr. King took it as a personal thing. We do not want to take the personal side. We want to focus on data and facts. And that's really our appeal to everyone who will be watching these, epi uh, these uh, uh, videos and this episode. Thank you again for watching us. Until we meet again, have a blessed day. Thank you for watching. Please like our video. And we encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sierra International. And be sure also to click the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we upload new videos into the channel. And finally, I like to prayerfully encourage you to become a patron through Patreon. Your giving is much needed and will enable us to produce more and more of videos like this so that we can publish them on a weekly basis. So thank you in advance.